I am Travis Brown, and today I'm gonna to show you how to create a bold editorial makeup look. If you wanna see how I turn this into this, keep watching. So this may look complicated, but it's really not. I'm taking MAC Cosmetics Iconic Viva Glam Number no. 1 lipstick, and I'm beginning to create a shape for this eyeshadow look. I'm using a MAC Cosmetics 239 synthetic brush to blend out this creamy base to make sure that everything is diffused. Don't worry about it moving. As we layer shadows later, this cream base will set. Don't be afraid to think outside the box when it comes to color and products. Use what you have to create dynamic makeup looks. Keep watching. This will be a theme in this tutorial. So now, the fun part. Let's get into shadows. Using a MAC 224 brush, I'm going to take the color Temptress, which is described as a satin paprika, to begin diffusing and blowing out the eyeshadow look. This color will also begin to add gradients and dimension to our shadow look while also setting the cream beneath it. You know I like to say dimension, I say it in like every video. I'm going to be concentrating this color on the outer V area of the eye. I'm really focusing this eyeshadow on the outer V area of the model's eye. I want this eyeshadow look to have a lot of depth, so I'm taking my time to really layer this eyeshadow and to also make sure that everything is set underneath it. Next, I'm going to be using a MAC 239 brush to pack the eyeshadow Wicked Game on the lid. This eyeshadow is described as a satin cranberry. I love the intensity that it gives the eye. If you recreate this look, remember to pat the eyeshadow on to set the cream lipstick below it. Next, using a clean MAC 224 brush, I'm going to add more intensity to the outer V by blending the eyeshadow Coconut Grove on top of the eyeshadow Temptress. This is going to give the outer V way more depth. Coconut Grove is a matte deep brown eyeshadow. It's actually one of my favorite eyeshadows. Leave a comment if you want to see a video where I show you my favorite NARS eyeshadows that I use on a lot of my editorial shoots. With whatever is left over on that brush, I'm also going to take that into the crease just to give that area a little bit more depth and intensify that area a bit. I'm excited, I finally showed the palette. So next I'm gonna use my clean finger to press the color Mendoza on the lid. This shadow has a glittery pink and copper vibe. I'm gonna give you a pro artistry tip. If you want your glitter shadows to show up, use your finger to press it on. Using a brush just won't give you the color payoff that you want. This was the perfect eyeshadow to complete this eyeshadow look. It just pulled everything together and it just made her look so expensive. Okay, so now we're gonna start working on the lower lash line. So what I'm doing now is I'm picking up the first eyeshadow color that we use, that kind of ready brick color, and I'm gonna take a flat brush and I'm gonna use a sponge just to make sure I don't go too crazy with this liner. And I'm gonna put it probably on just the outer third of her eye, just to give it a little bit more structure and just to kind of, you know, emphasize her eyes just a bit more. What's cool about using this sponge is not only is it gonna make sure that this line isn't too blown out and too diffused, but it's also gonna make sure that that product doesn't get on top of the makeup that we already have going on because one of the good things about this look is I'm kind of I'm recreating a look on top of another look so I'm building on what's already there so I don't want this shadow to mess up the foundation that we've already laid down So now we're gonna go ahead and finish up this look. So I'm gonna have my model look up and I'm gonna take just a little bit of concealer just to kind of clean up that lower lash line a little bit and to clean that line up just to make sure that it's perfect. I like using my fingers underneath the eye when it comes to concealer because I feel like the heat from my finger is really gonna make that concealer just melt into the skin a little bit more. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the same process on the other side just to go ahead and complete this eye look. Because this look is a little bit more dramatic, I'm gonna be adding a little bit more bronzer to this look just to kind of give her face a little bit more color. I think I'm using dark tan, um, some mineralized powder from MAC Cosmetics, and I'm using this like just on her cheekbones, on her forehead, on her chin, everywhere I wanna add just a little bit more color to her face. Okay. 
So now I'm going to be taking Exhibit A from this NARS palette and I'm going to go ahead and start just adding a little bit of color back to her face. I always say like orange is the black girl's pink. Like especially if you have like a lot of golden undertones to your skin, like sometimes pink can go kind of clowny. But to me, orange, especially because she has like these golden undertones, it just works really well with her skin. So I'm going to be using this just to kind of give some life back to her face and really intensify this drama because the good thing about this look is this look is all about drama. So I break all the rules when it comes to makeup. I'm not one of those people who believe you can only, you know, use liquid before powder or you can't put liquid on top of powder. I'm actually going to take like a synthetic brush and I'm going to go back in with just a little bit of concealer or foundation color. And I'm just going to go in and kind of clean up her blush a little bit just so it's not too blown out, too diffused. It's like I kind of like putting color where I want it and then I'll go back and I'll clean it up a little bit. Okay, so now it is time to exaggerate this highlight just a little bit. So she already had a little bit of highlighter on, but I'm just gonna kind of go back in with a little bit more. Um, I'm using a very subtle one. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is also one from NARS too. I kind of just went kind of NARS crazy in this video. I think it's called um, Port de France or something, but whatever it is, I'll link it down in the description box. And I'm just kind of going all over the high points of her face with this. Because I know that this photo shoot is going to show like a lot of skin, a lot of neck, a lot of chest. I'm also going to take that same glowy highlighter and I'm just going to go over her clavicle, like her shoulders, her chest, just so her skin or her body can have the same glow that her face does. Creating this lip was super fun. So I'm going to be utilizing a lip cocktail to really create a dynamic look on her lips. I'm going to be using eyeshadow, lipstick, lip liner. I'm going to carve it out with concealer. I'm not really going to explain what I'm doing because I'm really in artistry mode right now. What I'm going to, you know, recommend that you guys do is next time you do your lipstick, try something different. Take a little metallic eyeshadow and pat it on the center or all over and just see what kind of fun lip looks you can create when you do things out of the ordinary. So we have come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me create this bold editorial makeup look. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you like the most about it. Let me know if you like the colors. Let me know what you want to see next. Also, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And while you're subscribing, go ahead and check out, you know, this beautiful model and this dope photographer who I couldn't have done this look without. Thank you. Until next time, stay pretty.